All right, good morning. I want to talk about section 1.6 today, expressions for real life situations. And today I'm recording with uh, an elective going on in my class. So you might hear some noises in the background and it should be fine. Hopefully you should be able to hear me okay. If not, let me know and I'll have to figure out another solution for other days. Um, so we're going to rem remember what expressions are quick and then we're going to talk about why expressions are important and then we're going to do some building of expressions. So remember, we've been talking about, let's use a different color, variable expressions. And recall that those are um, phrases, which means there's no equals. And it means that they contain numbers, operations, and variables. And again, those look like this. It could be 3x plus y, or it could be 10r minus x. Notice that there's um, operations of multiply and operations of subtract. We could also have b cubed plus 2, or even mx minus 4. Now, some of these have two variables, some of them have one. There's no number requirement for, them to, for it to be considered a variable expression. All it needs is to have at least a variable operations and numbers in it at some point. It doesn't actually need um, numbers, it could just be a variable as well. Um, now, let's take a look at a, of an example of what a variable expression could be. So let's take a situation. We're going to take a look at Kate and her book. Now, Kate has summer reading, and she needs to read two books over summer vacation. Now, she doesn't want to read the books at the last minute, and she wants to, and she wants to spread out over her whole vacation. And her vacation is 72 days long. Now the question is, how can she write an expression to represent the number of pages that she needs to read every day? Now, this would be pretty simple if we knew the number of pages that were in the books. For example, say there was um, one, uh, 100 pages per book. If I just wanted to find out the pages that she needed to read per day, I could just add 100 plus 100 for the two books, which would give me 200 total pages. And then I could just take 200 and divide it by 72, because I could get pages per day. And that would be really, really simple. But the problem is, we don't know the number of pages per book. And in fact, the only number of pages that we can say is that book one has, and I can write this, book one pages. And I can write that meaning a variable that represents the amount of pages that are in book one. And book two has book two pages. And I call these subscripts and I can den denote separate variables as separate things by putting a little tiny number after it like that. Because if I write it as with a big number, it looks like it's part of the expression. And I can do exactly what I just did. I can say, well, if I knew the total number of books, I could just divide it by the days. And I can do that. I can say book one plus book two over 72. And that is going to give me the number of pages that she needs to read every day. 
And in fact, without knowing the number of books in book one and book two, this is simplified. And this is the variable, the variable expression that I need to get to. Now, what these are handy for is that later, if I do find out the book, the number of pages in book one and the number of pages in book two, I can easily plug it in and evaluate just like I was doing before. Okay, this is what we're going to be doing in this chapter. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, let's look at a baker. Ralph is a baker. Let me get my paper all situated. And uh, he makes the same number of loaves every day. L O A V each day. He uses five cups of flour in each loaf. We're going to write an expression to represent the number of cups of flour that he uses every day making bread. Write an expression for total cups for total flour. Okay, so first I have to figure out what I do know. Okay, I know that we have five cups per loaf, but I don't know how many loaves are going to be made. So I can say that L is going to represent the number of loaves that are made. So L equals loaves in a day. So for every loaf, I know that I need to have five cups of flour. So that means L times five is going to give me total cups of flour. And I can simplify L times five, and I usually write this as 5L, because remember, mathematicians are lazy, and we don't like to write any operation that we don't have to. So this is going to be the answer. This is going to tell me how many total cups of flour I need if I know how many loaves that I'm going to be cooking. Now, so talk about how, how we said, now, he made a certain number of loaves, but he only sold half of them. Not a good day for Ralph, unfortunately. Well, if I want to know how many loaves he sold, I can take the number that he made that day, which I know to be L, because I've already determined that, and I say, well, half of L is simply L divided by two. I could write that, or I could write it as L divided by two. It doesn't matter which way. This way is what we typically choose as mathematicians, but both are technically correct. So if we're only selling half of them, we can do that. now. I'm going to do another, one more example that I'd like you to write down, and then I'll do a couple of afterwards. Most of the questions are going to be asking you today don't have a story that goes with them, but some of them do. Sometimes they'll simply say, write in a variable expression for 19 plus a number. For 19 plus a number. Well, this is easy, because we're going to write 19 plus... A number and I can use whatever variable I want in this case because any variable can represent any number in this example um, one other term that they're going to use is um, this it might say the quantity of a number of a number and 10 times 3. Now, this term might be new to us, this quantity of a number and 10. 
Whenever we see the word quantity like this, it means something in particular. It means something very specific in math. And what it means is that we're going to put parentheses around it and we're going to do it first. So if we see the quantity of a number in 10, a number in 10 means I'm going to add that together. So it's going to be a number, let's use n for a number in this case, a number plus 10. And because it's the quantity together times 3, I'm going to put them in parentheses and then multiply by 3. And in fact, if I want to simplify this and write it how a mathematician would write it, I would probably write it like this. 3 times n plus 10. And this represents quantity, a number in 10, times 3. Three. Because it doesn't matter which side I put the 3 on, according to my um, PEMDAS, or my order of operations, I'll always do what's in the parentheses first, so the actual order that I write it in does not matter. Okay, one last one um, before we go. This will be example 1. Let's see. This is going to be 15 more. Than, ooh, let me write it so you guys can actually see it. 15 more than 5 times a number. 15 more than 5 times a number. In this case, I'm going to do 5 times a number first. And it's going to be 5 times a number, so we'll do 5 times a number. In this case, it's going to be just n like this. I can put a times or I can know that it's implied. And I'm, then I'm going to add... 15 to it. So this one's easy. It's not a quantity this time, so I'm not going to be adding first. I'm going to be adding afterwards. So it's 15 more than 5 times a number. And this 5 times a number is going to be first because that's how our order of operations work. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense. If you're still confused, come find me or ask a friend and I'll do my best to help you out. Good luck.